DAISY was originally developed to solve the problem that the libraries around the world had about what are they going to do when the analog cassette goes away. Mm -hmm. And everybody knew they had to tra transition to digital, and there were no standards around for for talking books mm -hmm. uh, that were digital. And if you take a book that is just um, uh, like a music CD, you only had 74 minutes. And there, we needed to deal with, you know, books that were 13, 14, 20 mm -hmm. hours long. And so we turned to um, uh, compression for audio uh, technology. Mm -hmm. But then you've got 13 hours of a recording, and you want to be able to move around in the book. Yeah. So we used XML to create a navigation model that would allow a person to go from, uh, like in a textbook, from uh, chapter, section, subsections, mm -hmm. or, to, or to any pages. Mm -hmm. And that's how, how DAISY started uh, more than 10 years ago, mm -hmm. with all the big libraries around the world getting together and collaborating on international standards. The next phase that, that took place was that uh, the end users wanted to be able to uh, search and spell words and and it started to move beyond the blindness population mm -hmm. into people who had low vision and uh, dyslexia and other learning disabilities. So it's not just the, the, the blind people who are... No, in, in fact, one of the great benefits of DAISY is that it's not just the audio, right? There are different types of DAISY that you can imagine. So mm -hmm. one of the, the most incredible ones, and one of the ones that I... the implementations that I saw was that you can sync DAISY audio with the text. So you don't have to eliminate the text. The text is still there okay. and it still has the headings. And one of the great things is that you can listen to the audio as the text is highlighted and it's synced with the text which is truly incredible for literacy, for learning languages, for dyslexia, and a host of other, um, just maybe wanting to listen to books differently mm -hmm. for general population as well. So. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, we for the text, we, we turn to the uh, through, to XML uh, to represent the information. Mm -hmm. And we were looking for something that was very simple that could represent uh, um, a, a textbook and, and most books, but in, in a very simple, straightforward XML vocabulary. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's the DAISY XML that, that we've developed, and it's ideal for taking um, uh, books that are in print or PDF or in uh, open XML. Mm -hmm and moving that content into a very simple, straightforward representation. And you mentioned about being it sim being simple. Uh, could you uh, describe how simple it is? I mean, uh, for because we we can see and we can read all this text. How how do, how does it uh, from your side? How 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 does it work? Well, first of all, we when when you're reading along, mm -hmm. you you know where there's headings, mm -hmm. pages, okay. paragraphs, block quotes, chapters, or chapters, yeah. sections, subsections, okay. and you can move into those, uh, move through those very very quickly, quickly. and uh, that that is uh, we don't have we don't have fonts, mm -hmm. we don't have. Uh, um, we we do have some emphasis, but we don't have underlining and strike through yeah, okay. and all the different things uh, you, you you see, mm -hmm. and it's so it, it simplifies the book book very much. What you have to do in a visual presentation is put in all the visual cues that the sighted person uses to tell them that this is a heading, mm -hmm. and uh, we we do it with the semantic elements in in XML. Mm -hmm. But there's only 82 there's only yeah. 82 elements in in our could XML you, vocabulary. Could you give us an example, like what kind of semantics? Paragraph. Would, yeah, would describe a paragraph, for instance. I'm reading. Just, a, it's uh, just a paragraph. Paragraph is a word title, right? So a title style would be it would say title. Titles, so okay. in Open XML, there is the concept of title. There's an ODF too, okay. and there is an Daisy, yeah. Yeah. right? So if you style something correctly as a title, then when you're listening to it, it's going to say 
title Fido, or something uh, along those lines, depending uh, on how you want. Page one, chapter, yeah, exactly. Next sentence, something like that. And those, like that. those are all concepts. And what makes this, when we say easy, is this is the great, great power of XML. Is that this information? It's easy to pull out and find an mm -hmm. XML document. You know where this information is persisted. You know what the namespace is. You mm -hmm. know what the elements are that you're looking for. And it's easy for me to look at George's uh, specification and Daisy's specification and say, hey their title is this, so I need to take the information from our title field, I need to put it here, and now mm -hmm. I've got the same title and someone can listen to it or read it through Braille or something. Yeah. You, you were mentioning in your talk this morning that um, they're now using this in little devices like the iPhone or other, I mean you're holding one right now. I'm holding one. <laughs> You call this, what, what, well, this it? one is made by Humanware, which is the largest producer of DAISY devices mm -hmm. uh, in the world. I've got it. It's a very little speaker. Um, mm -hmm. I usually use it with headphones. but um, And I've also got it reading very fast right now. Mm -hmm. So let me slow it down. It, this is an interesting thing to note about users who consume um, audio uh, through screen readers or through DAISY is that they listen to things very, very fast. So it's not like they're consuming content any slower. They actually yeah. consume it in many cases faster than you or I would because they're yeah. listening to 150, 300 words a minute. Well, I'll wow. start it and... I'll slow it down. So that's already slow. Yeah, it's <laughs> quite fast. <laughs> yeah. So and that's a, that's a weird thing for people to adjust to is that this community can consume amazing amounts of content given the right technology. Mm -hmm. and even for that's now at normal. Yeah. So, yeah. So, that's the norm. That's like normal that's reading, normal speed, reading right? but I can speed it up and then. Um, I'll stop it and I can go to uh, level, one. level one. I can go to the next chapter. And then, if I want to go to a particular page, mm -hmm. and, and think about the power of that in a classroom environment, right? Mm -hmm. Because the teacher says, okay, today we're going to start on page 245. If I'm a user with even a you know, a lower end disability like dyslexia or all the way to blind, it's easy for me now to say, okay, I can go to page 245 just as easily, if not faster. I bet George could type in 245 on that faster than I could guess where page 245 is, yeah, right? Yeah, so. absolutely. Yeah, and uh, it, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's leveling the, the field of education, uh, the students. Uh, <clears throat> The, the biggest one of the biggest problems that 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 people have is the teachers, especially in higher education, decide on what what textbooks are going to be used. You know, a couple weeks before the month before the, the course starts. Oh gosh! So how do you get this book for the blind student that's going to be taking it? You know, there's because it takes it used to take months to produce the book. And so students could only take courses for which there were books available in the library mm -hmm. from from recording for the blind. Now, with with the technology, the publisher with the files could produce a Daisy book in a matter of minutes.